Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are gonna be continuing on with our VGC content, concentrating on that new rule set that will be implemented on the 1st of August. So we've got a little bit of time before that does come into effect, uh, cause it is currently series nine, but I think everyone kind of put their message across quite clearly on that poll and said that they'd prefer to see series 10. And I think it's a good idea. I think we get our hands dirty with the format, kind of learn what's good, what's bad, and what kind of works. So we're gonna do that over the next few weeks in the lead up to that official rule switch over. And we kicked off on Friday last week with a bit of an episode on Zashian, which is pretty much one of the top no pun intended dogs in this format so today we're going to look at a little bit of a different pokemon something else that is going to be pretty predominant i feel going forward and i think it's got some uh huge potential it had some good finishes over the weekend in the battle frontier tournament that we saw um in particular and that pokemon is zonius so zonius is a very interesting pokemon it really struggled in the formats uh Prior to this, obviously Series 8 where we had Dynamax, but now that's gone, I think Xerneas has kind of had the change, the chain's kind of taken off and it can be unleashed a bit. So this is the team that we're kind of starting off with. And just to mention, all the teams that we feature today, there'll be Poker Piss down in the description if you want to grab them. Grab certain sets or spreads or whatever and just try them out for yourself. So this is the team that we kind of started off with. The Xerneas, the Rillaboom, Incineroar, Regieleki, Talonflame, uh, and Landorus Therian. Um, but I'll be featuring two builds today, and the, the second one is going to be very, very similar, but based around uh, the six Pokemon that Kunal, good friend of the channel, shared who um, finished in the top eight of the Battle Frontier tournament this past weekend. Now, I couldn't play in that tournament. I had... Um, childcare duties all weekend so i wasn't able to to participate which is a little bit sad but you know it just happened so hopefully there'll be more in future where i'll be able to take part but this was the the six that kunal used um and got top eight with now i don't know his exact spreads or sets or anything like that but i put my own spin on how the team uh can be set up so like i say the pace will be down below and uh, if you want to take a look at them. So we'll start off by explaining a few things with, with Xerneas. So um, one of the things that I wanted with my Xerneas in particular was obviously we're going to have that power boost from the Geomancy, the plus two in special attack. So I wasn't too worried about uh, putting a massive amount in a uh, special attack. I wanted to stay in the field for as long as possible. You've got the fairy aura kind of boosting its attacks additionally on top of that. Uh, so I wanted it to stick around as long as possible. Now this, this combination here allows you to take a behemoth blade from a neutral neutral uh, Zashian. So you need to intimidate it. Um, and it just gives you that addition, like just a little bit of security, you know? Um, the speed stat allows you to get the jump on Shadow Rider Calyrex on plus one. So if they're, the, you know, Electro Webbing you, you're still gonna be able to outspeed the, the Calyrex on plus one, which is quite nice. And that little bit of speed that will help out in certain situations, but that's pretty much the Xerneas in a nutshell. You don't need to go into too much detail here. Uh, the Rillaboom on this build is a salt vest. For how we really want to look at using Rillaboom, I feel you're going to be switching in, in a lot of the time uh, to overwrite terrains or to just give you that additional fake out while you protect Xerneas, adjust your board position a little bit. So it's more than likely that, that Rillaboom will be coming onto the field and taking damage. So you want the Assault Vest there for most of the time they're going to be special attacks that are going to be the things that are coming out to hit you. Just gives you that little bit of extra staying power again. Like we've got that kind of um, ethos behind Xerneas. We just want to be able to have our Pokemon stick around for as long as possible. So the Assault Vest definitely helps out there. We've got high horsepower playing around with it. I don't know if it's the best option. I do like knockoff personally, but I've been trying high horsepower. It gives you an option to hit Zashian a bit harder. Uh, things like Incineroar a little bit better. Um, so it is an option there. But I, as I say, I think that option here could be changed. There are a plenty of options that uh, Rillaboom does have access to. Even Woodhammer could be a better option as well over high horsepower. But it's entirely up to you and what you feel like the, the team kind of needs. Um, and then we'll move on to Incineroar. It's a bit more of a defensively built Incineroar this one. Obviously playing in with the Intimidate it definitely helps uh, but things like Mianchao that, that 
can't be intimidated um do cause us a lot of issues um because they can just straight up close combat us and that is instant or gone for the rest of the game we kind of want to avoid that so with this investment here you're able to take that close combat from a mind shower which is really nice the taunt is there because i wasn't really seeing myself use snarl too much now snarl is a good option but you kind of got that kind of same option in a repositioning aspect with parting shot anyway and the taunt just gives you a little bit more security against something like trick room being set up because you can see on face value this team will struggle a little bit against trick room um and then the rest of the 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 evs were kind of just dumped into special defense so it does leave us a little bit more vulnerable on the special side of things so we need to be a bit conscious of that with this instead of all but for the most part the defensive side of it it's going to really be able to kind of match up a lot better against those big threats like Zashian, like Mian Xiao and, and Pokemon like that. Regieleki on this one, we went for a Life Orb just for that additional power, max speed as well. It's going to be the, the Pokemon that we're relying on a lot of the time for speed control against things like Shadow Rider Calyrex, for instance, if we don't have our Talonflame out, to get that Electro Web off, just to get big damage onto the board as well, especially boosted by the Life Orb, makes it pretty threatening. Um, and Regieleki is just solid all in all. Um, and then we got the Talonflame Flame. Town Flame, an interesting Pokemon. I do feel like it is very good. Uh, we've got the Quick Guard on there. It gives you protection against priority attacks, which can be pretty clutch uh, in cases against um, opposing Fake Out with Xerneas, especially if you're set up and your opponent's trying to play around, get their, their Fake Out back onto the field active again to disrupt the, uh, the ability of of you being able to sweep them where the quick guard kind of really overrides that and then the tailwind gives you that additional advantage and at least you can then keep pace with opposing uh, tailwind pokemon you could go jolly here on the talent flame it is an option uh, but i've opted for adamant just for that a little bit of additional power for hitting things like uh, rillaboom things like volcarona which are pretty popular at the minute um and the flare blitz as well for hitting things like zation a little bit harder then we round off the team with Landorus Therian. Now, Landorus Incarnate has been very popular, but I do think there's some um, viability in, in Therian still, especially with that Intimidate. Now, you could go a special set on here. I've went for more of a physical one, and there are conflicts, of course, with the Grassy Terrain and Earthquake, uh, but between Superpower, Rock Slide, and Earthquake, you've got nice coverage, as always. Got the Rocky Helmet there, and pretty much, again, going, like, really heavy on the defensive side here, because it does allow you to take attacks from Zashian a lot better, uh, it takes Surgeon Strikes from uh, opposing uh, Urshifu's a lot better, um, but we do have nice coverage against Urshifu anyway, especially the Rapid Strike variant, like Rillaboom, Regieleki, and Talonflame help us deal with that a lot, and yeah, even Xerneas to a certain extent with the defensive boost that we feel like the investment that we've got there. So all in all, team's pretty nice, we'll play around with this one, and then we'll move on quickly to talk about uh, the, the kind of Kunal uh, Shade 6. So there's a little bit of a, a variation here, obviously the, the first four Pokemon are pretty much the same, except I went for the Magnet just to give that a kind of run out on Regieleki. And the big thing I think the, the message here is, I think don't be tied down too much when you're testing teams to specific items, just like go for it. If you wanna test a different move or you wanna test a different item out, it's a good time to do it, you know, and especially like Showdown is the perfect place for us just to see if these things work. Now, the, the variations with this team are obviously Kunal, Ran, the Volcarona and the um, the Urshifu. Now, I'm still not sure if he was running uh, the, the single strike or the rapid strike. The rapid strike makes sense because you've got the Firewater Grass caught in there and also that the Urshifu kind of plays off super well with the double intimidate where you can you can really shuffle your, um, sorry, double fake out. So you can shuffle your fake out and really kind of nail opponents if they're trying to protect on your fake outs then Urshifu can really punish that with its crazy unseen fist ability um so the Volcarona is a little bit different from the grassy seed one that we ran on Friday in that Zashin team so this one is full max defense because this will allow you with the citrus berry to take that surgeon strike from opposing rapid strike Urshifu's and at the, the same time you're going to be, have that that chance to burn them as well uh, you've still got the ability to quiver dance up to kind of get a little bit set up with the the Volcarona as well and the rage powder is really quite essential for helping Xerneas kind of perform to the, the best of its ability um and then the rapid strike urshifu there is is pretty standard with the sash so that is the team so we'll start off with a couple of games with the team and uh hopefully we can uh have 
a good showing of both of them. Look at like popular calls in the format and see how the teams can kind of handle those. So we're starting off against a, a Zashin team with Tornadus, and then we got the Urshifu, the Rillaboom, Incineroar. I swear we're all gonna get sick of this these calls popping up in Nihiligo as well, which is a nice uh, Pokemon to bring um, in these sort of games. So I think what we'll do is we'll lead off with. I mean, the thing is, the Tornadus definitely definitely threatens us with um speed control of course and shutting down xerneas for a start um we'll go landorus and i think we'll go i feel like we need boom in here as well you know i mean we could go on with talon flame definitely helps us out with a bunch of stuff it's whether we want rillaboom as well um, I think we go a talent flame, keep pace with their with their tailwind if they go for it. Um So we do have the option to earthquake here, but again the grassy terrain being up makes it a little bit more difficult for us to uh to um I mean we can earthquake. This is the thing we can earthquake and quick guard because we block we block the fake out, we block the grassy glide, which is quite nice. We would take big damage from the Nihiligo, but then the next turn we could potentially just go Tailwind. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, they're going to Rapid Strike. Quick Guard, not going to help us this turn. But just the Power Gem coming out, okay. So, get the Earthquake. We should still do nice damage to that, that Nihiligo, which is good. Um, and we still have the, the Brave Bird, which we can go to go for into the Urshifu or we can just go for a Tailwind here. Now I think we just Tailwind just in case because they have to then go for Aqua Jet and they may not, yeah they're not going to go for it where we can get the Nihiligo which is good and then they're going to Surge and Strike into our Landorus and you can see here how well we're taking that and doing almost as much damage to them with the Rocky Helmet as they've done to us which is just phenomenal you know. Um, so we're in a good spot we got a Tailwind up uh, we can go for the Brave Bird into the Urshifu the next turn, which is great. Uh, and Lander is still intact with its its Intimidate because you know that the you know for a fact that the um... mm. I think what we're gonna do we're gonna have to protect Landorus and then switch into Incineroar because I think they're gonna fake out an Aqua Jet maybe. No, they're detecting. Okay. Uh, you know there's Ashens in the back. This is the thing. So we need to preserve our Intimidate. This is a big thing for us, you know. Um, where well, we might need to give up. Potentially give up Talonflame here. Now, which might not be the, the worst thing in the world. Um, the problem is now that the Ashens is going to be in a spot where it's going to be able to get its substitute up. Which is not ideal. Really is not ideal. Um... And I kind of would prefer to stop the Zashin getting a sub up over anything else. Okay, they're going for the Incineroar, which we should take this. Because this should just proc our berry. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And now we're in a good spot to get the Urshifu. We'll get our Tailwind up again. Um, but we can we can cycle the Intimidates now. We can just Brave Bird into Urshifu. Uh, switch into Landorus. We'll probably lose Talonflame and they may protect the Urshifu here again but they haven't really got the switch in now to the Rillaboom at this point because we'll see the Brave Bird's going to take down probably the Rillaboom even if it switches in because we're not minus one but they do detect. Um, that's fine. And they go for that Sacred Sword which we still take. This Landorus is ridiculous, redonkulous. So this is a nice example of, of how, how the teams perform well. Now we do have the option here where we can Tailwind. But again, I think we want to prioritize going for that Brave Bird. Um, and then just switch into Incineroar here and get another Intimidate onto the Zashin. Because it's likely we may see the, the Rillaboom come onto the field. Um, but it is the Behemoth Blade, so that's fine. Um, and we'll get rid of that that Urshifu. We lose Talonflame in the process, but that's that's not too bad because that Zashian's now super weak. Um, and what we can do is we can get Xerneas onto the field now. They've got the active fake out, but it's it's still it's kind of fine because we just protect. We switch into Landorus. We put that Zashian down to minus two. Uh, the Rillaboom going to be minus one. They'll potentially take down the Landorus here. Also, the, the Rocky Helmet damage would be nice, especially if they fake out into the Incineroar slot. Um, and then we've got the active fake out to kind of help come in the next turn and help us out. 
yeah the sacred sword there we go just taking the rocky helmet so great so great on it and i think this is a really good example where we've kind of kept the zashin not really a threat to us at all now so we can just go for the geomancy now what's worse uh i think the Zashian's always going to be worse. So we'll fake out the Zashian because we don't want that sub going up. That's the big thing. Like most Zashians are going to have a substitute, right? So um, we want to be able to, I mean, they're minus, what they minus three or four now, which is just crazy. So the, the Intimidate cycle in some matches can be so beneficial. And you can see, you can see the value of the Rocky Helmet, like really bulky uh, Landorus here coming into play. We'll see what this, this Rillaboom does. It's minus two. So, I mean, it's still not going to be doing very much. U-turn doing absolutely zip so what we can do is just i think just dazzle and just go for a flare blitz into the zashian at this point because they're so weakened from our intimidates that they're not really going to be able to do anything i mean that is just ridiculous damage right and i mean we're not doing huge damage ourselves but they, i mean even then the incineral with that defensive bulk just shows how, how good it is and we can just moon blast and pick up a nice clean win for this one so i mean this is a good example of how the team's kind of performed well and the zassi uh the the, the Xerneas at the end of the game you know in an amazing shape so close that one off and um we'll have one more one more with this team and then we'll jump into our other one and see what we can do uh, about having both teams featured in today's episode. We've got uh, Inveltal, which is most part really good for our Xerneas. Got to watch out, especially as a Xerneas player, for things like Haze on Tapu Fini. Obviously, the Celesteela as well going to be there to really give us a lot of issues. But we do have options to deal with the, the Celesteela and Regieleki and Cinero. Definitely going to help out with that, especially the Talonflame as well. Uh, got to watch out for Tailwind and taunt on that whimsicott going to be a little bit awkward to deal with and obviously the urshifu as well can give us all sorts of problems so um especially leading with the xerneas especially if the the urshifu does come out it means it's it's just difficult for us to um to, to protect in front of you know um right i think i think i think what we're gonna do is go xerneas talent flame rillaboom and I think a Lecky here is going to be probably the best option for us because a Lecky really gives us nice ways to deal with the Valto, the Tapu Fini, and that Celesteela as well. Uh, we've got to watch out for the Landorus, but with the grassy terrain up, it's not too bad. There's also like the, the, the you know, I've been tempted to play maybe something like Grassy Siege, a Lecky, but the problem is with that. Aleki is one of those Pokemon where you want to try and get in and out on the, on the field and you know it's not going to be sitting on the field for turn after turn after turn so it kind of wastes to seed although the defensive boost at times could be quite nice um, to, to, to utilize. Uh, okay so I think here we're just going to protect we're going to switch straight. Mm, do we go for the Tailwind just to kind of give us the edge because they can Tailwind as well. It's not a bad idea probably at worst with Talonflame going to take potentially a muddy water now they could taunt us but i think they're more likely to taunt the xerneas here just gives us a little bit i think we taunt tailwind here then we switch into rillaboom we tailwind with them and yeah the muddy water comes out and we get away with that scot free we get away with that scot free now do we want it do we want a geomancy probably not probably not in all honesty i think we probably want to just go for um maybe a moonblast into the tapu fini um we could dazzle and go for a brave bird into the whimsicott in all honesty because that that would give us then a way to to remove their speed control option and they do switch into celestia which is yeah makes sense i mean we're going to get nice damage onto it regardless here um and even if we lose Talonflame, they're, they're going for their haze. Yeah, they're scared of the Geomancy. You know, that's the thing. We've got to be very patient with how we're utilizing the Geomancy here, you know. Uh, we do have Flare Blitz, so we could potentially just go, you know, Dazzling Gleam and Flare Blitz. Uh, they do have Wide Guard, but uh, you can see their Talonflame coming in like an absolute beast. And uh, even if we get that muddy water now, that's still not the worst. We do lose Talonflame, but it's a it's a it's a very good trade in my opinion. Now we can bring in Rillaboom. Now we got the opportunity to go for the fake out into the Tapu Fini. Now does this Whimsicott have Taunt? I don't know. It could do. The thing is, what we could potentially do is Geomancy and Grassy Glide here. Yeah. 
this is all right and if we see the taunt we do see the taunt that's fine we know it's there now uh which is fine like a lot of the time you know like xerneas doesn't necessarily need the geomancy to perform you know um i think we can i think we double into the whimsicott with a u-turn and a moonblast um i'm not really too worried about the landorus especially the build of xerneas you know and this particular team yeah, they're going to U-turn. They're going to get their Tapu Fini back on the field. We want to reset our Intimidate onto our Rillaboom. We want to try and remove this Whimsicott as well. Take away their Speed Control. Take away their Taunt options. Um, we'll be able to get Reggie Alecki in, which is fine, because we've got that switch straight back to Rillaboom if we need to. Or we can protect Reggie Alecki here um, and bring in Rillaboom, which is probably the best play, in all honesty. We reset the Taunt on the, on the Xerneas as well which is nice um but you know against these teams are really set up against things like Z xerneas you don't necessarily need to um <laughs> no okay well that freeze is not so good um <laughs> ah they're just gonna earthquake they're gonna earthquake they're gonna earthquake uh well we can grassy glide they're gonna earthquake. They're gonna earthquake. I mean, we take the earthquake. We take the earthquake. This is really frustrating for us. That freeze is not ideal. Um, hmm. We'll take the earthquake. We'll we'll go for a. Yeah, they're gonna earthquake again. Are they gonna go double up into Reggie? No, they're not fast enough to. I mean, we get it, but yeah, the freeze just makes this really annoying to deal with. Their tailwind's gonna run out soon. Um. Let's just let Aleki go down. Let's just mindlessly Thunderbolt. Yeah, they're going to do that. It gives us a free switch into Xerneas and we can just Geo in front of them and just, yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter at all. But you kind of get the gist. You get the gist, right? There's the Earthquake doing absolutely nothing. Let's see if Rilla can thaw. Come on, Rilla. No. Frozen Solid. Moonblast. Bye-bye. Good game to my opponent. So, we'll move on and we'll have a couple of games with the Kunal build now. And we'll see how we can get on uh, with this one. And then that should wrap up the episode. Oh, we're playing another Eveltal. Eveltal seems to be picking up a little bit of popularity, especially with the stack attacker. It's a combination that we've seen in previous formats. It does very well, complement each other very well. You've got both sides of the spectrum. You've got potentially Tailwind here. You've got Trick Room here and a lot of Pokemon to kind of benefit and play around with, especially with the trap from the Gothitelle, which makes things a little bit more awkward uh, for us to kind of function around. Um, whether or not we want to lead with the Xerneas here is another question altogether because i think the the problem is um if we we lead it into like stack attacker it makes it a little bit more difficult and and xerneas is always a good pokemon for the for the late game at least um with something like parking shot we can get around um the, the the kind of being stuck on the board and i do feel like you know our own urshifu here isn't too bad we've got to be very careful around the potential Rillaboom which makes it a, a lot more difficult anyway but something like Volcarona can do a decent job again it's going to be a bit difficult but I think not the worst uh, and I think we got Urshifu and hmm or is or is <sighs> Rillaboom better maybe Rillaboom's better you know I just think like the fake out, Rillaboom can do a lot of work. Yeah, we'll go Rillaboom, we'll go Rillaboom, we'll go Incy, we'll go Incy, Volk, Rilla, and Xerneas. Yeah, that's kind of what we expected. Now we'll probably see fake out here and they're just going to rock slide here, which is not ideal at all. Um, but we do have, we do have, um, we can fake out. No. I think we parting shot and we heat wave. Oh, they don't even fake out. We could have went for the fake out, but that that's nice. We get the Rillaboom onto the field, which is always good. They're going to hypnosis us a trick room, trick room, trick room. I don't really get that. That double trick room in there to compensate for the the fake out that we we'd have that fake out disruption, you know, um, where we can fake out. Gothitelle now and just go for another well I mean we could go for Giga Drain we're probably going to do more to the stack attacker especially with the boost um yeah we'll go for that okay and see coming in that's fine uh, heat wave there would have been probably better in all honesty um okay but we can readjust again with our, uh, a boom go for the u-turn and then just go for a 
heat wave yeah they fake us out that's fine we'll get that nice chip in and we'll just bring incineral back onto the field and we can just keep cycling you know trick room going up and we have to stall this trick room out but that was always going to be the case you know that was always always going to be the case i think we'll go for a parting shot into the opposing incineral the important problem with with the volcarona is obviously we don't have um access to protect which makes it a little bit more tricky of course but we can bring rillaboom back in flare blitz we take that like a champ get that citrus berry you can see the defensive capabilities of the volcarona as well now that gothitelle's in a real real awkward position where we can just go for a u-turn into the incineral and just go for another heat wave because they've got no way to knock out the volcarona you know they can go flare blitz again but it's not really going to make much difference because the heat wave is going to take down the gothitelle do a nice bit of chip to the incineral and we still got that active fake out going into the next turn so i guess this kind of shows how you can kind of get around these where you know one trick room user is gone and the trap is gone which is the big thing for us you know so we can we can fake out here into this stack attacker um bring rillaboom in and then we get another fake out the next turn and then we can try and get xerneas onto the field i think that's what we're try going to try and do at least uh okay parting shot i don't mind that really too much rillaboom coming in okay that's fine that's fine that's fine because we can just bring in volk we want to just we want to just you know take our time with bringing the the Xerneas onto the field we want to time it right if we can but if we see a u-turn yeah and big fat damage there and um stack's gonna come back on gonna be able to get that trick room up again now which is not ideal but we could we well i mean we can double up we can go for we can go for the giga drain we can go for the high horsepower and if we get one of them we'll get one of them you know we are minus two attack though with with rillaboom which is not ideal but at the same time, it's not it's not terrible. We're going to have to contend with another round of Trick Room. But again, like I say, not not super terrible. We're going to see Rock Slide for sure come out. But we need to reset. We need to reset the Intimidate. I don't really want to lose Volk either, just f f carelessly. We've got the Grassy Terrain up, so it's going to help us get a bit of health back. Body Press coming out, not ideal. Um, and Flare Blitz doubling up into that Rillaboom slot. Uh, but we do get a Fake Out now. Um... So they got gyro have they got gyro ball that's that's the interesting that's the question isn't it that is the question i mean we can geomancy here probably not worth worth geomancy um i think we bring rillaboom in and just go for a fake out into the stacker hopefully we don't see a flare blitz into the uh, rillaboom slot taunt that's fine because we got fake out again so we really want to kind of set a, a, a situation up where we can Mm, I mean, they're going to body press regardless, aren't they? Let's go for Vulcan here, and then we got the Incineroar switch in the next turn. Are they parting shot? Are they flare blitzing? We do take it. And one turn of Trick Room left. Uh, I think we may. Maybe better. Mm. Now we'll get Incineroar in for Boom. We'll go for a Heat Wave. Because we may be able to take yeah okay they get us there okay and then rillaboom gonna come in on this heat wave we are minus one but i meant i mean the damage right now is super nice for us unless we miss unless we miss of course but we do get the burn okay so that's pretty nice okay that's good we can't complain too much so uh the big thing is obviously yeah not ideal we'll fake out stacks and we'll go for a heat wave again they're gonna fake us out okay well, we'll fake out them, and then we've got, yeah, then we've got the double up now into the boom, uh, into the stack attack to stop that that trick room going up. Now they could switch in Incineroar again, potentially protect, or we could go for the taunt and just shut down that stack attack completely, which is not a bad option. We do survive because of that burn, which is good. Get rid of the boom, go for the taunt, stop the trick room. And then we're in a great spot. Obviously the burn helping out there, but it, it kind of comes into play a lot of the time, you know. And this is just one of those games where we have to be very careful with how we're playing around with our Pokemon. Fake out probably into Boom. Um, We'll go for a Giga Drain this time. I mean, we could Quiver Dance as well. That's the other option because they haven't revealed Rock Slide at all yet. But Heat Wave is probably the better option. We could Giga Drain. Oh, they're going to go just fake out into that slot. They're going to Body Press. Yeah, okay. 
then we get Incineroar back in onto the field. Um, pick out. Let's get some health back on this stacker because we want. It's not doing very much at all, even in the grassy terrain. Minus one, and the body press coming out. And now we got Xerneas to come in, and we're going to be in a decent enough spot. Now they got the Trick Room back, which is the problem, but we can Moonblast and Heat Wave, and I think that would be enough to get the stack attacker. Hopefully it will be. Yeah, Heat Wave should be enough, as long as we don't miss, which we don't, which is good, and then we can just wrap this one up. So, if Leblet's coming out, you can see that, like, you can see how good this this bulky Volker honor is you know they'll get the rage powder now we'll take another flare blitz uh it gets our geomancy set up 100 we are in a great spot to just go moonblast for the win and uh we can quiver dance just for style points and that is that so friends as i say both teams are down in the description below you can check them out try them out and i hope today's episode it's just opening your eyes to, to maybe playing some of these pokemon a little bit differently like xerneas is normally 252 252 or at least like a lot of the time you know you just want that max speed max attack but there are different ways to kind of play around with it and i think like just exploring some of the different ways with how some of the pokemon kind of are meant to function different builds like the Rillaboom with the assault vest it makes a lot of sense like you're going to be switching it around a lot you want to prolong that longevity of on the field so that makes sense um like i said the the volcarona again we featured it on friday we're featuring it again today it makes a lot of sense but the one thing i would say is you know we got to see a really great match between the alternate of options you know the talent flame and the the lander is doing really good work in that first game and the rocky helmet showing how good it can be now the spreads in particularly don't need to be like this you can play around with them and like i said there is an option to go jolly on talent flame as well it just gives you that little bit more security and that 195 roll speed stat uh, with 252 investment is incredible so you are going to lose a little bit of uh, offensive pressure but again do you do you necessarily need it for how it's going to you know act so uh, they are the teams this is Xerneas we've touched on it today we'll be going a lot deeper into it in the future but I hope you've enjoyed today's games friends thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day and I will catch up with you all again very soon for another episode on the channel